It's comparison time for the Pixel 6 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro. Hi, welcome to Zigadge Review. So I know this video is super delayed. I'm comparing the Pixel 7 Pro to the Pixel 6 Pro. But the reason why this video took so long for me to make, it's because one, I moved, and two, it's because I had issues with my Pixel 7 Pro. Now the issues that I had happened during the month of December and it bled into January. And those issues were that when I will watch a video, in this case, uh, when I will watch the World Cup, the phone will freeze. So every time I was watching YouTube TV, if I answered a message or I tried to go do something else on my phone, the phone will just freeze. And I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't do anything. I will have to wait for the phone to restart itself. And sometimes I took a long time. Sometimes I took a short amount of time. But the problem got worse as things went on. And this all happened after I did the review on the phone. A little thing that I learned by contacting Google is that if you don't buy your devices directly from Google, it is going to be very hard to get a refund or to return the device or to exchange the device. I bought my device through Best Buy and that was one of the reasons they gave me why I couldn't uh, get a replacement right away. Because I am so lucky, the exchange period had a rate pass. And so Best Buy wouldn't take the phone back for an exchange. So I contacted Google. Some of those things were that I needed to buy the new device from them, brand new, send my old phone to them, and then wait for the new phone to arrive. Which, of course, if you don't have a phone to use during that time, which they said could take up to two weeks, you're screwed. And so to me, that was a non-starter. So I had a big argument, had a lot of back and forth with them because it is a bunch of BS that a company that is selling you a device will come up with that crazy idea that they can take your phone away for two weeks while you wait for them to send you a replacement for a device that's broken, not because of you, but because of them. I was able to finally get them to send me the phone while I held on to my phone. They put a charge on my account for the full price of the device. Once I got the new phone, sent back my old phone. That took about a week and then they released the funds. Now, I understand that Google has to protect themselves from people trying to scan them and trying to get new devices and things like that. But there's gotta be a better way for them to do this when you're having an issue with a device that you didn't cause. That is one of the reasons why it took so long because eventually everything played into the end of December, beginning of January, and then I moved and all that. So what you're going to see, everything you're going to see was shot during the holidays. And my plan was to release this in the month of December, but then I wanted to be able to solve my problem with the Pixel 7 Pro in order to tell you what my saga was. So my recommendation is if you're buying devices from Google, buy them directly from Google, save yourself the hassle uh, that I went through. It sucks that this is the case, but you know what, companies, get away with uh, shit like this all of the time, which is unfair and it sucks. <sighs> so the difference that I'm noticing is I don't need to keep my finger as long um, on the Pixel 7 Pro as I have to do on the Pixel 6 Pro. So if you look here, that I need to keep my finger longer for it to read it. And so that's the little difference there. It is fast, but it's not as fast as the Pixel 7 Pro. So look at this again. So I put here. And so there's a little delay. I had to put my finger there a little longer. This is just a quick touch. It might be a few milliseconds, but it does make a difference on the user experience. Here we go with the face unlock test. And so you can see the phone unlocks really fast. So definitely it's a feature that is worth it. Here we are testing the cameras on the Pixel 7 Pro, which is the one on my right hand side. I'm gonna move it right now and the Pixel 6 Pro, which is the one on my left-hand side, which I'm going to move right now. And so both these cameras right now are shooting at 4K. Now on the Pixel 6 Pro, we cannot choose how many frames per second we can do. So it's doing whatever it does. And on the Pixel 7 Pro, I have it at non-HDR 30 frames per second. So you can see the difference between both cameras. I have also speech enhancement on thankfully it's not a very windy day today it's 
late afternoon. I think it's about five o'clock right now. Let me take a quick look. It's 5.02 on the dot right now. So sun is going down. Here, I'm going to turn around so you can see behind me what's going on. And I immediately can see how grainy the Pixel 6 Pro is getting, which is this one right here, versus this Pixel 7 Pro. And that's because the light is obviously in my back. I can also see the sky there is very, very, it's blooming out on the Pixel 6 Pro a lot. I don't get as much contrast or detail versus the Pixel 7 Pro, which I do get some details. Not the best, but it's much, much better. And also I don't see as much noise on my shirt as I do on the Pixel 7 Pro. So let's turn around again and you can see there the difference in each image. Now I'm going to switch to 4K 60 frames per second on the Pixel 7 Pro. Now we have 60 frames per second on the Pixel 7 Pro and the Pixel 7 Pro has the speech enhancement off and the reason is because speech enhancement is not available on the Pixel 7 Pro when it has 60 frames per second. Uh, 4k and that's using the front-facing camera of course on both phones Pixel 6 Pro on my left and this one doesn't have any sort of changes Everything's still the same as the previous video and on my right hand side the Pixel 7 Pro so and if you can hear the dog in the background and walking in different ways against the leftover light so you can see the difference and I'm moving slowly so you can see the sky there and the trees behind me so I think that's a good way to see the difference between both devices and how they shoot video using the front facing camera. I'm using both cameras, uh, back facing cameras. I don't know how this looks because I cannot see what I'm filming. But I have the Pixel 6 Pro on my left right here and the Pixel 7 Pro on my right. And both phones are actually shooting at 30 frames per second right now. I have speech enhancement set up on the Pixel 7 Pro but not on the Pixel 6 Pro. For some reason it's not available. Uh, when I switch it to 30 frames per second. So we have 30 frames per second 4k in both devices And here you can see me moving around with the light How things are changing around me and the reason why I'm picking this time of the day is because cameras have a hard time especially phone cameras doing you know video and pictures when there is low light and I figure Pictures and videos are going to look great with a lot of light around, right? Daytime is going to look amazing, but evening, afternoon, darkness is going to make a difference on how these cameras handle those lights. Pixel 6 Pro moving in Pixel 7 Pro. Here we have the cinema setting on the Pixel 7 Pro, and what it does is it blurs the background from the subject. So I'm using my hand here to show you how fast the camera responds. And then I switch the camera around to show me and see what happens when you're moving around. So you can see by my ear, there's some issues with the feature. If we zoom in here, you can see how my ear is getting like doubled up and a couple of times it blurs when the feature is trying to catch up with my movement, but the background seems to continue to be blurred. So if you don't move too much, you shouldn't have too many issues. Here we're comparing night sight images, as you can see on the...
Pixel 7 Pro, I rarely had problems with the battery towards the end of the day. And that, of course, varies depending on how much you use the device and what you use the device for. I'm talking about a full work day starting at about 8 o'clock in the morning. No, that's not true. About 6.30 o'clock in the morning, going all the way until about 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm talking about listening to podcasts, listening to music, watching some videos here and there, taking phone calls, texting, emailing, going into Instagram and all those things. So I had a full day's range of battery without any issues. I would usually hit the 20% warning once I get around 6 o'clock, 6.30 p.m. and that's when I will have to plug in the phone versus the Pixel 6 Pro, usually with about the same amount of use, I will stop working around 5 o'clock, 5.30, starting at the same time. And so there is a big difference on battery life, in my opinion, with the Pixel 7 Pro, which puts it on top. But is that enough to get the Pixel 7 Pro? After comparing both devices, it's hard to pick a winner, per se. And the reason is because there are some things that I prefer from the Pixel 6 Pro. For example, me not looking so red or orangey in selfie images as I did on the Pixel 7 Pro. Pixel 7 Pro, of course, gives you a little more contrast and makes the image look a little more natural than the Pixel 6 Pro. But I don't, I wouldn't say that that's something that a lot of people will be like, oh my God, I have to get the Pixel 7 Pro because of that reason. Of course, the Pixel 7 Pro has something that the Pixel 6 Pro doesn't have and won't have, and that is face lock. That is great to use. That makes it very easy to unlock the phone. Of course, the fingerprint sensor being a lot better is another thing that makes the device a lot better. But as of right now, the Pixel 6 Pro is going to get the same features if it hasn't already gotten the same features that the Pixel 7 Pro has. So a lot of those little things that the Pixel 7 Pro had when it first came out, the Pixel 6 Pro is getting now. That, to me, tips the balance to either getting a Pixel 6 Pro or sticking with your Pixel 6 Pro until we see what the Pixel 8 Pro is going to have. I'm sure we're going to be getting a lot more leaks on the Pixel 8 Pro and other leaks of what the device is supposed to look like, but I will do some videos on it once we get more leaks on what the chip is going to be like, battery life and all those things. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this comparison? Did I convince you to stick with the Pixel 6 Pro or to buy a Pixel 6 Pro? You're going to go with this Pixel 7 Pro because it's a newer device. Let me know in the comment section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and on. hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.